Uh, we're here together to, uh, to discuss some science. I've got a, a number of um, bloggers from around the blogosphere, from the US and from the UK, and we today wanted to share some um, science ideas. So it's not just about what we're doing today, but also about um, you know encouraging people to have a go at science. It's not always about knowing all the answers or being able to explain everything, but it's about having a go, um, having some fun, exploring together, and um, just seeing um, you know what sort of science things you can unearth. Um, I'm, I normally blog at Redhead Art, which is a craft site, so there's going to be a little bit of uh, arty stuff chucked in with mine, and also have another website called Life at the Zoo, where this is probably a bit of, of a better fit. So, so mine today, really simple, I've got a three and a five year old, and one of their favourite experiments ever is uh, ice, so ice cubes. They love putting water in, sticking it in the freezer, waiting an hour, come back, it's not frozen yet, mummy, running back. So it's sort of exploring, seeing what's going on. Quite often in the freezer, I'll find toys, frozen solid. They then take them out, stick them in the bath. So they just love playing with ice. They find it really fascinating that sort of something liquid goes into something solid. Um, and they've obviously understood that it's linked to temperature as well. So it's, it's really good to do some sort of introducing things, what happens at different temperatures, you know, what happens to different materials. And then in terms of adding um, a little bit of colour or a little bit of arty stuff, I just want to also share this little experiment in inverted commas that we like doing. So we've got our ice cubes that we froze, and the kids love doing this. And we then basically mix them in different colours. So we've got some yellow ones, got some blue ones, I can get them apart. And then we just watch them melt and see how, as they melt, you go from primary colours to secondary colours. Obviously, this is more of an arty part of the science. But, you know, you get to watch the ice cubes melting, and then at the same time, you get to see the magic happening of, of blue and yellow turning into green and orange and, and purple. So this is my little experiment. I'll show you at the very end what it looks like and see if it's melted. But um, ice is a really simple, clean fun. Um, and yes, just a little bit of freezer space, and it's something that you can do with, with any age group. So anyway, I'm going to pass over now to Trisha, who has a science blog. Trisha, over to you. Hi, I'm Trisha, and I blog at Inspiration Laboratories. Um, I do love to share lots of science ideas there as a former science teacher. Um, it kind of just makes sense for me to do so. My son's three, and so I typically share toddler science ideas or preschool science ideas. And one of the biggest things that I want to say to remember when you're doing science is to ask those questions of your kids when you're doing science. Um, have them ask questions or just make sure when you're doing some activities, get them thinking about what's going on by asking some questions. Today I want to share um, something about trains and so what little kid doesn't love train tracks and really this activity can be good for all ages um, if they're old enough to play with train tracks they're old enough to do this activity it's uh, chain reactions or cause and effect and so I have a little setup here a little ramp and if you don't have trains you can do it with cars and whatever kind of ramp you have and so the point here is to show the the cause and effect with what happens when the train runs into the tree and will run into the little clock tower here. So we just run into it and it knocks over the tree but it didn't knock over the tower and there's where the question comes. Well why didn't it knock over the tower? What happened? Can we um, change something to make sure that it will knock over the tower? Do we need to make our ramp higher? Do we need to um, increase the distance or put something else in between? One funny interesting thing to note when my son did this, when first I introduced it to him, he was two he took the little ramp, and I showed him how it went first, but he took it, and he just knocked over all three of them. That was his goal. So we had to talk through it a little bit and explain that, well, no, you just let this go, and the point is to see the chain reaction, how this one will run into the next one will run into the next one. And like I said, just simple little fun science activity playing with trains there. That's it, and I'm going to pass it to, I think, Emma, right? Yes. Um, I'm Emma, I'm from Science Sparks, which is a blog full of science experiments for children of all ages, but probably starting around 18 months and up to 10 and maybe even further if you um, extend the activities. Um, obviously we do lots of science at home with all my children who are um, almost six, four and two, and I just love that um, everything we do just leads to more and more questions from them. And I don't know the answer to everything, I'm not an expert in everything, but if I don't know the answer we just tend to look it up together which is quite fun as well, and we all find out some new things. Um, today, though, um, I'm going to be talking about shadows, which 
it's really good for us because it's something that all my children can enjoy and all start to understand. Um, so basically you get a shadow when an object gets in the way of a source of light. So if you're outside it's the sun, if you're inside it's what, whichever light you've got inside. Um, so for my girls we tend to make a shadow puppet or something like this and then in a dark room we um, shine a torch on the wall and put the shadow puppet in between the torch and the wall and then we move the shadow puppet forward and back and just watch how the shape changes. Um, or even when we're outside my two-year-old loves to um, try to catch my shadow um, or we've drawn round shadows, measured shadows, there's just so much you can do. Um, it's just a really simple, um, just a really simple e example of science that's all around us at home, outside, and something you can do with children of all ages. Um, so I think I'm passing on to Chris from Thinley Spread. Hi, uh, yeah, I'm Chris from Thinley Spread, and I've got a huge range, uh, age range of children in my house. I'm the youngest is seven, and the eldest is nearly 17, so we've done a lot of of science experiments over the years, but I think the word, when you start talking to parents about doing science at home, they can get very scared of that word science and they can start worrying about knowing all the answers and I think the most important thing is, is it's not to worry about knowing all the answers, it's getting children and yourself to ask questions and then go off and try and find the answers together as they get older or just, you know, just science is all around you at home so it's just doing it all the time and you sometimes you don't realize you're doing it so for example I've got a little slope well but with my little slope and my car I was talking about gravity so it can be something as simple as running a car down a slope and talking about what's happening um, and then and like Emma said you can spend weeks doing the same sort of thing so you can go on from the car down the slope to maybe making a marble run out of tubes um, we've got Easter egg tubes here and toilet roll tubes and making a massive and a huge tube here making huge marble runs right around the house just again talking about gravity and the balls falling down why they're falling down if you make it higher do they go faster and then you can start throwing things down the stairs so you, and you can look at different weights of things so you can stand at the top of the stairs and throw heavy things down light things down time them see which is the bottom first um, you can do I mean you can do so many things you can do paper airplanes so you can throw paper airplanes and talk about what they're falling. So all different ways of talking about gravity and, and not worrying, that's the most important thing, about not worrying about knowing all the answers, find them out together, that's the most important thing. And I think I'm passing on to Anthea. Hi, I'm Anthea. Um, you, some of you may have seen me, I'm talking on some of the craft hangouts and Zing Zing Tree, but um, today I'm talking as Blue Bear Wood, which is more of my kind of family lifestyle blog. Um, I have six-year-old twins and a seven-year-old, so my all girls, um, and they're very close together and we have always as a family um, encouraged them to ask questions and, and often have explained things that may seem um, too complicated for the age that they are. The kids are quite um, good at grasping kind of key, key points and they pick out words that they like the sound of. Um, one of the things that's happening at the moment is with their reading books is they're often getting information books home to read um, and one of them a few weeks back one of my twins had was about the water cycle and what I like to do is I like to be able to give them visual things that help them to understand some of the written things that they read about so um, Roro was reading about the water cycle and she was quite interested in the, in the clouds um, and the fact that water turned into vapour and it was very difficult to explain to her in words what vapour was um, and how that was part of evaporation. So what we did is, having finished her reading book, we went into the kitchen and um, I did a very simple thing, but you could see her little face light up. Um, we got a saucepan lid and a slightly bigger kettle than this um, and I filled it up with water, switched it on and as the water um, I said to her, you know, the water's evaporating all the time and the water vapour is very light and you can't see it, but sometimes you can see it as steam. So she can see the steam starting to come out of the kettle. And by holding the saucepan lid above the steam, what happened is, is the water started to form water droplets. And I was explaining that's what happens in the clouds. The water starts to condense out, form water droplets. And when the water droplets get very heavy, they start to drop down and lo and behold as the water started collecting on top of the, the lid down they started dropping and the squeals of excitement about this were great so you could see the connection happening so then it was possible for me to say when we go outside in the summer and it's really hot and you're painting with the paintbrush on the water and it disappears that's because the sun is heating up the water and it's 
lifting up and so she's you could see all the little connections and, and what happens we found is is because we've been talking about things like this from a very young age up to what they are and making them more complicated and then introducing slightly more complicated visuals everything is just starting to make connections and they remember things as well and it brings up conversation um, and it's also a nice one I think because dads get involved it's a very family centric you know grandparents so whoever happens to be around can um, enjoy the discussion and for me that's what science is about it's kind of actually getting everybody to talk together and, and bounce around ideas and like others if um, they ask questions that we can't answer then we'll go and find somebody who can or we'll go and look it up and talk about it so um, it's about having fun and I'm now going to pass on to Anna who knows lots of things <laughs> about having fun with science uh, I'm not sure that's true. Um, I'm Anna, I'm from the Imagination Tree and I blog about lots of creative play and learning ideas for young children. I was a teacher. Um, my children at the moment are only four and two and a baby, so actually we don't do full-on science experiments too much. My emphasis with them is about learning scientific ideas through play, everything's about play or through really visual and stunning activities that they can kind of see afterwards. Oh wow, look what happened. Not necessarily we're going into it with a kind of um, design of what we're going to do and you know, we see what happens as it goes. So I'm talking about something that we have done every spring because it's so fun and it's age old. It's the lovely one of planting a bean in a jar with cotton wool, which is so visual because of course you can see the shoots coming down and the roots, uh, the roots coming down and the shoots going up really, really fast within three, four days. You can see it happening. And we did this last year and we charted it with photographs, which is good for younger children because, of course, um, they're not ready yet for doing the writing and the um, journaling of it. So that was lovely. And this year we're going to do it again. And I think that my four year old might have a go at drawing diagrams as we go through the process. So that's lovely and visual and really, really good way for kids to see how fast a plant can grow. Okay, I'm passing on to Ali. Hello, thank you very much. So yes, I'm Ali and I blog at Kids Chaos. Um, and today I'm going to be talking to you about something that we have done, which is making ice cream and basically finding science in ice cream. We went to the uh, Canal Museum and there was a lovely gentleman there and he sat down with us and showed, it was just one to one and showed us how we could make ice cream. And it was just so inspiring. We ended up taking um, all, of, all of our props I'm going to show you now into a classroom of six, uh, 30 children and we made ice cream. All the children made ice cream. It was such fun and they loved it. So basically you take a big bag of ice you have some salt, you have another plastic bag which you put milk, um, sugar and vanilla essence into. You put that bag inside the big bag of ice and um, you agitate it. So everything's got to be really sealed up tightly. Basically it's the thermodynamics, so it's thermal energy transfer. Now, they're not that bothered about that, really. They just want to eat the ice cream. That's, all, that's their ultimate aim. So basically, the science is, and I'm sure you all know, because we put salt on ice on the roads to melt the ice. So this, the science is the salt melts the ice, the heat transfers from the milk liquid into the ice, it makes the milk liquid colder quicker, and it freezes. And then they eat it, and they absolutely loved it. So that's how simple it could be. So I'm passing back to Maggie now. Thanks for that, Ali. That reminds me of my engineering days of having to learn all about thermodynamics. Um, so just close it off. You're going to the, 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 the ice cubes. Look, they're all melting nicely. You're getting some green. You're getting some orange. So it kind of just makes sort of the whole, the, the purple isn't so strong, but it kind of just makes a whole uh, melting ice thing a little bit more exciting or a bit different or, you know, just, just puts a bit more variety. We can also talk about, you know, why do things mix when they're liquid and why don't they mix when they're solid or if you then um, you could expand on this and get some milk and some oil drops and see why they're not mixing so I mean it, you can take this anywhere um, 
So really, uh, I hope you enjoyed our Science at Home um, session today. Um, it's really all about having a go, discussing, finding out together, exploring, just seeing what's happening in the um, environment around you. And as your kids get really into it, you know, that's when you can look at more complicated things um, or, you know, you, you'll see what pace are at. And I love, for example, um, Anthea's um, project and I'm, I think I'm going to have a go at that with Max. I love that. Um, so anyway, so thank you all today um, and hopefully enjoy this Science at Home session and hopefully see you again soon. Thank you. Bye-bye.